So you've crafted the perfect title, description and tags and metadata is on point. But what does YouTube really think of your video? Well, it just so happens we've got a brand new free tool to tell you just that. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. Hello folks, I'm Rob. Welcome back to vidIQ, educating you on your YouTube journey. If you do want to take advantage of a tool I'm about to show you, then make sure to download vidIQ as it will help you research YouTube, analyze any video on the platform, which is what we're about to do, audit your own channel and suggest actionable steps that will help grow your own YouTube channel. It is free to download and there is a link in the video description. All right, just before we jump into this tool, I need to explain a little bit of jargon and that is free base topics. To keep this as simple as possible, free base topics is a way of assigning a common topic to places, people, songs and so on. What's most important about all of this is that YouTube automatically tries to do this with your video and every single video on the platform and that data is made available through the YouTube API. As an example, if we take the most watched video on YouTube with its 6.3 billion views, these are the tags that were fed into YouTube, but these are the topics YouTube automatically decided were associated with the video. And a question you might be asking at this point is, does a video need a lot of views to be assigned into a YouTube topic? Put simply, the answer is no. This video was published very recently, has less than 100 views and different tags, and yet the video still has these same topics. So this is all to do with metadata, right? If I include certain keywords in the title, description, in the tag, YouTube's gonna be able to put my video in the right topic and serve it to the right audience. Well, PewDiePie is notorious for not caring too much about metadata. This video only mentions Minecraft once in the title, description and tags, and yet YouTube still classifies the video within the video game culture topic. On the other hand, when PewDiePie mentions Minecraft in the title, along with an action verb, raiding, YouTube seems to have more information to work with and adds two more topics, action game and role playing game. Now that all seems relatively straightforward, but what happens when the video content gets a little blurred? Say with a video creator such as Mr. Beast. Well, this video titled World's Largest Bowl of Cereal has YouTube clutching at straws a little bit, suggesting the topics of lifestyle and technology. If Mr. Beast buys a homeless man a Lamborghini, then swap out technology for vehicle as a topic. But if Mr. Beast challenges people to stay in a Tesla, that's purely for entertainment value and nothing else, according to YouTube's topics. Can you directly control these YouTube topics? Clearly not. Can you influence these YouTube topics? Yes with metadata, but is more going on besides. Although there is no hard data on this at the moment, YouTube is likely looking at captions if you've included them, maybe even comments on your video and watching the video in an artificial intelligence type of way. But ultimately, what does this all mean for you, the individual video creator? That's where we need to do some big data research. We handed over our numbers on video topics to data expert and CEO of Little Monster Media, Matt Geelan, to come up with some answers. Matt was able to define the super topics and how competitive they are, as well as identifying topics with few videos but high average views, presenting possible windows of opportunity. I don't want to steal Matt's thunder on this one, as his videos are always a fascinating insight into the inner workings of YouTube, so do check it out over here. And if you want to find out more about what vidIQ can do for you, check out the full beginner's tutorial over here. Enjoy the rest of your video making day. We'll see you again soon.